guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on the Toyota pickup once again. In the last video, I tore out the entire interior and laid down sound deadening mat to get it ready for what I plan to do today, which is install a vinyl flooring kit. So in case you missed that, let me go ahead and show you what we're working with and then we'll get that kit installed. So I've been restoring the interior of this 86 3RZ 4Runner and I had a little bit of leftover sound deadening foam that I wanted to install in the pickup. So this truck already had sound deadening mat throughout the entire cab. So all I did was install this foam in the floor pans here. Now the carpet in this truck actually isn't that bad. The side that you're seeing right now is the bottom half of it. So it looks worse than it actually is. If we flipped it over, it's really not that bad. But the reason why I wanted to use vinyl for this truck is because I'm undecided on what I want to use in the 4Runner. So Having used carpet before, I figured I might try my hand at vinyl for the pickup and see if I like it. If I do, I'll probably use it in the 4Runner. So as you can see, it's a bit oversized, which is a good thing. It means we can cut it to fit. There's pretty obvious uh, indentations in it for the floor pans, and there's moldings here for the seat rails and the transmission tunnel. So I've heard some horror stories about how hard these things are to fit. It doesn't look like it'll be that hard, but I'm not exactly speaking from experience. I've never done one of these before. So I guess we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're already at issue number one. I don't really know where this mass backing is supposed to go. This is the front carpet area that came out of the pickup and this is the backing that came with the vinyl kit. Now it looks to me, if we turn around here, it looks to me as if this is the transmission tunnel. That is the driver kick panel area there. And these little cutouts are like reliefs for this to fit around the transmission tunnel. So that's where I'm gonna install it. It kind of fits in the back area here, but I'm not sure what good that's gonna do as uh, compared to putting it in this area. So even if that's not where that goes, that's where I'm going to make it go. All right, I got the insulation installed. I had to cut it a little bit under the dash right there to get it to fit, and I think that's to be expected. I don't think that these pieces are cut to an exact fit. I think you have to trim them to get it to fit your exact application. So moving forward, looking at the instructions for the vinyl, it does say to fold it in half and work from the back forward, aligning the vinyl with any contours that are already in it, like the seat rails here. So what I think I'm gonna do is exactly that. I'm going to start from the back, move forward, and I'm going to probably bolt it into the seat rail area here once I get here so that it doesn't move around and it makes the install a little bit easier. Oh yeah, this thing is uh, uh, this thing is huge. Um, <laughs> there's gonna be quite a bit of trimming that has to be done to get this thing to fit in here. This thing is huge. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just start trying to get this thing to fit and <laughs> start working on the trimming. 
All right, I'm making some progress now. This is very hard to work with. All of the horror stories about how like thick this material is, how hard it is to work with, uh, they're turning out to be true. I had to make a little bit of a relief cut here to fit the dual case uh, twin sticks through the vinyl floor. And I was able to lay it down in the back floor pan area and it looks pretty decent. I'm gonna have to take out these seat belt bolts and make a hole in the vinyl. Then I can probably hold it down in this area to at least secure it there. And I think I might have to take out this plastic panel as well, which is gonna suck because if you're a Toyota guy, you know that panel's probably gonna explode the second I take it off. Luckily, I have two replacement ones over there. We're making progress. I got the seatbelt brackets holding down the vinyl on both sides. On the passenger side, I cut the bolt hole a little bit too big and you can kind of see through the vinyl. It's not really a big deal whatsoever. I just wanted to show you guys that I messed up over there. I'm gonna wait to trim up all this excess until I'm finished laying the vinyl out through the entire truck. So all I have to do for this rear section to finish is drill out the bolt holes for the seats. You can see there, under the vinyl there. There's four of them. So once those get drilled out, I can move forward, cut the holes for the shifter and the transfer case and start pushing this thing toward the front of the truck. All right, I think we're just about done with the rear half. There was a little bit more that I had to do than just cut out the holes for the seats. I had to cut out the holes for the seatbelt buckles too, as you can see there, and that rear uh, factory bottle jack location. And there's a little harness that runs off the factory buckle, so I had to make a cutout in the vinyl for that too. But other than trimming, I think we're finished with the rear. The majority of the bolt holes in the floor pan are in this area, so a lot of the work is complete. All I have to do now is start moving forward. I don't see any reason why I can't make one long cut right here, so I think I'm gonna do it. Like, it, it's not gonna fit anyway until I cut this, so that can't be wrong, right? I got the front holes cut out for the seats on both sides and then I was able to stretch the vinyl across so that I could get it tight from side to side. I'm trying to do whatever I can to not take this panel off. I don't think I'll have to do it. I think I can kind of just shove it under the trim like that. I got the shifter holes cut out. As you can see, I have my dual case shift boot reinstalled here. It looks pretty good. 
no complaints. Uh, this little piece right here will be hidden once I make a shifter bezel or trim area for this truck in this area here. But if I did have the factory shifter bezel, this is cut too low. I definitely messed up there. That would show under it. And I did measure twice. I just measured twice wrong. So if you're going to take on a project like this, make sure that your, you know, cuts are a little more conservative so that you don't end up, you know, having that problem. I'm not too worried about it. It's not a big deal. Anyway, I just have to move forward now, trim this whole area here, and then shove this up against the floor pan. That's definitely the hardest part of the whole project. I did it on this side already. As you can see, it's basically complete. We have all the trim reinstalled and it looks really good, but it is very hard to do. This material is so hard to work with and it's just so tough. Like it's just a really thick, heavy material. So anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna cut this and start pushing that up against the floorboard. Okay, the floor is installed and I'm ready to reinstall the interior now. This stuff is really hard to work with. I definitely didn't believe all the reviews saying how hard this would be, but yeah, definitely not an easy task whatsoever. The hardest part by far is stuffing it up against the firewall on both the passenger and the driver's side. It's just hard to, to shape it to the right fit and the material is so stiff and tough to work with, it's really hard to shove it up in there. There are a couple areas where I messed up as I mentioned previously, so if I was using the factory shifter bezel, you would definitely see that area under the bezel. I cut it too much. Um, I messed up a little bit right here, but you can't even see it because the trim covers it. So I, I thought I cut it too far in, but apparently I didn't. And the last thing is that over here in this corner, you can see I got a little trigger happy with the razor blade. And uh, yeah, so now I have this little piece sitting in the corner that I really wish wasn't there, but it doesn't matter. That's an area that we'll never see. So yeah, gonna go ahead and reinstall the seats and we should be done.
All right guys, so I really like the vinyl, but now I feel even more undecided than before on what I wanna do in the Forerunner because I hated installing the vinyl. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Let me know what you think I should do. Should I install vinyl or carpet? in the Forerunner. But anyway, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching, and if you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Later.